Good morning. Welcome back to another Saturday morning VFX adventure, guys. We are we're going to be doing some really cool stuff today. I'm very excited. And, um, you know, I'll probably say this a couple times while people filter in, but I want to give you guys a quick overview of what we got in store on today's stream. All right, so as you guys know, we're doing the Parallel Dimensions Contest. It's an environment, um, 3D environment contest that I've been doing over the last month with NVIDIA and PNY. We're doing some awesome giveaways, but um, basically on today's stream, what I'm focusing on here is basically taking this mountain that you see here on the bottom right. You know, it's a very plain, basic mountain. I hadn't even touched it yet. It's just kind of a default, default mountain here inside of Cinema 4D, and we're going to turn it into this amazing volcano that you see before you right here. We're going to talk about first um, giving a rocky texture that we're happy with, um, and then we're going to add some of these like foreground, well I guess they're it's all in the background, but we're going to add these like craggy little extra bits of mountain that surround the volcano. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work on this shader probably with an emissive in Octane, but we're going to get this lava flow look going down the volcano. And then finally what we're going to do is if you look in the crevices of this volcano, you can see um, <laughs> my cat Gilbert is like stomping all around the computer here. Hey, bud, now's not a good time. Now's not a good time. So we're going to basically, and you can tell he eats this thing. Like my mic cover is is basically covered in little Gilbert chomps. <laughs> but lastly, what we're gonna do is we're going to talk about how to add these like animated steam jets um, coming out from the the belly of this volcano, and we're gonna you know use After Effects and some animated PNG sequences to do that. So I'm very excited to hop in with you guys and make this make this thing look super awesome. Um, so, okay, a couple more things, a couple more things. I have to write all this stuff down because it's a lot. Um, next, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm doing a render contest. It's a 3D environment contest. And what you're looking at here is actually what I created on the first stream, um, two streams ago. This is concept art that's going to guide my 3D rendering, as you guys can see here. This is what we created last week, all right? So this was week one with concept art. And week two was creating the, the ground, getting a realistic looking ground. And if I come in here, if I get a little closer, you can really see like, you know, we spent a lot of time getting this mud looking right and breaking up um, the mud and different reflections. And I can still tweak this. I probably still will, but not on today's stream. Um, we're focusing on the volcano. All right, so if you guys hadn't seen those last two streams, definitely definitely do so. Um, you know, hang out with me for the, for the day today here for the next few hours. Um, and if you hadn't started, if you hadn't joined this contest, it is not too late. It is it is not too late at all. Um, it's called Parallel Dimensions because what I'm going to do is I'm asking all of you guys to create some awesome environment using this template um, of this character who's walking toward this mountain. Everybody's got this template. You can download it. Um, the link is in the description. It'll bring you to this page right here. So like I said, I'm working with NVIDIA and PNY to do this with you guys. And they're giving out some super awesome prizes too. So basically, you know, this is just a brief description of who I am, what I do. Um, you know, I don't want to get into that. I don't need to get into that right now. But Parallel Dimensions basically is this contest that we're doing together. You can download the template right here. You can enter as well. Um, you have both streams right here. This is basically a place, this is the landing page where all the info is going to be added and your guys' submissions as they come in. And I've already got the first like five or six submissions. We're going to be adding them to this page as well. So this will be a place for you guys to track that. Um, and again, this is what we created last week. All right, and as far as prizes go, um, NVIDIA, they hooked me up with a Quadro, and it really is incredible. I truly do love it. It stands out to me in ways other cards have not. Um, but the first place prize for you guys, whoever wins this render challenge, gets the Quadro in RTX 4K. Um, second place, you guys get an NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. Third place, 
a one terabyte SSD, which is super crucial um, for working quickly. And fourth in place, honorable mentions are going to get a 256 gigabyte flash drive. All right. Um, now, you can only win these prizes if you have a U.S. Uh, shipping address and you are a U.S. citizen. Um, apologies to my international folks who will be submitting. You can still submit. You can still join. I just can't ship these prizes out to you. Um, it has to do with some legal stuff on their end. Um, it's a bit complicated, and I do apologize. So if you are international and you do win as well, I do want to send you guys one of my prints. Um, I do have a, bloop, a print website where, you know, I have all my photography, and you guys can buy different prints. Um, you know, I'm running a 15% off sale right now. But for those of you international folks who win this thing, like I definitely want to make it worth your while. Um, and I'm going to be sending you a super nice print, you know, signed by myself. I got a note on the back and got some really nice music recommendations that fits the piece of art that I'll be sending your way. So um, definitely wanted to make that right with you guys. Now, the contest does end on November 2nd. That is the last time um, that you guys have to upload. And right at the end here, right at the bottom of this landing page, you'll see, you know, you got eight days, 14 hours. It goes it goes down and to the second here okay so make sure you guys upload right in here um and yeah i think anything else um yeah we talked about faqs deadline um you know at the beginning of the second stream so last week's stream i, I did a whole bunch of faqs and if you guys are a part of my uh create with clint discord server i do have a parallel dimensions like section there where there's FAQs, you can read all the FAQs there, and I'll be adding to them as you guys have good questions. So, shall we jump in, everybody? How, how's everybody doing here? Let me let me check in with y'all. Thank you for joining, everybody. Really appreciate y'all. I'm excited to jump in today, do this volcano, make it look super nice. Ooh, let me grab my coffee. One moment. All right. What are my Chrome extensions? I got dark mode. Dark mode. It's the way to go. I wake up really early. So usually I'm not on my computer when I wake up super early, but I eventually do get on my computer around seven o'clock um, and I don't want to blast my eyeballs <laughs> with white with a white screen so dark mode is very handy what's up everybody I'm glad that you guys are working on your submissions um, if anyone here is working on their submissions or is still planning to enter give me a thumbs up all right I'm very excited for all the stuff that's gonna come together for this and at the end of the day, I'm going to choose the top 20 best renders. On, no, on the November 7th stream, I'm choosing the top 20, okay? And I'm going to put them together into a super cool audio-visual montage um, that's it's really going to showcase all of your guys' hard work. So the harder you work on this, the better that final end product will be. I'm going to post it on my channel here. I'm going to blast it out. NVIDIA is going to blast it out. PNY is going to blast it out. So it'll be a really cool chance to get some awesome exposure and win some cool prizes. All right. So, how are we going to do this volcano? I think the first things first, we need to find a texture that that really works for this for this mountain in the background. It's going to be kind of foggy, so I don't think we need to do anything too crazy, right? Um like we don't need any we don't even need 4K textures. I think a 1K or a 2K texture will totally be fine. We don't need displacement or anything like that um, because it's so far away. We need to save as much of our computer po computing power um, for for the whole scene. Everything's going to build up really fast, all right? So we don't want to waste it where we don't need to use it, okay? So I think the first thing I'll do... Um, you know, I'll probably hop over to Bridge, 
Quixel Bridge. Now, the foreground texture you're seeing here, this is RD textures, real displacement textures, and they're the best textures I've ever used. Um, they come in 4K and 8K sizes, but let me just browse um, Quixel Bridge real quick to see if they have anything that will work for us. So I'm going to go to Surfaces, and we'll go to Rock. And I think Jagged would be nice. So we probably want to mix a few different textures together in order to get a more unique kind of look, okay? So we certainly want everything to be, um, ooh, Icelandic quarry rock, that's not bad. Layered cliff rock, this is pretty good. So I'm gonna start favoriting these as I see ones that I, that I like that I think will work for us. This is a good one. Um, I saw one up top here that's actually not bad. The coal mine wall is pretty good. And we just want a little bit of texture differenti uh, differentiation. I think that's the word. Um, in these three that we choose and we'll mix them together. It might just be two. So let me start with this and we will we'll go from there basically, right? So let me download this. You definitely wanna download the 8K versions. Because why not, you know? So I'll download that guy. And let's go ahead and download this coal mine wall as well. Download and we'll export just the 2K. <laughs> Gilbert is like way back in there. It's hilarious. He's having a hoot. Um, all right, so these are doing their thing. Basically, we'll mix those together in order to get this kind of look here, this rocky look, okay? And then we're gonna come in here and we're probably gonna select some of these polygons and make an emissive texture, two different emissive textures that will break up with a, um, basically some octane noise. One of them will be this red and one will be this bright white, orangish yellow. Gilbert, what are you doing, bud? What are you messing with down there? All right. Sweet. I'm excited to see how, you know, this animated PNG sequence will really work with these like little steam vents inside of the volcano. I think that's gonna look super cool. What's up everybody? Thanks for joining, thanks for hopping in. Good to see everybody here today. <laughs> yeah, at 5 million subscribers, I watch all of the MCU movies um, with you guys. We'll do a we'll do a live a live viewing of that. <laughs> Look at this little bud. This little Gilbert just down here. What's up, Gilbert? Hey, bud. He's romping around. He's having a good time. All right, let's check our downloads, yeah? Sweet, so both of those finished. We'll go ahead and export. Check our export settings, 2K, that's perfect. So let's grab both of these. Uh, what just happened? One and two. Oh, come on. So we'll export coal mine wall, and then we'll hop in here and we'll export the second one, boom, the layered cliff rock, 2K as well. You guys have seen me use Quixel Bridge before. It is the best. Um, it's the easiest way to transfer models to the program of to your program of choice. It works with everything. It works with um, with Unreal, with uh, with Maya, with Blender, with Arnold, with you know basically any any renderer that you have. Like you're going to be able to make use of that. So it. It dropped these two materials down here in the bottom left. My head's covering it, but you know, they look like these, they're there. So let me hop out of camera view and let's get really close to this mountain and just real quick, like see what we're doing. Okay, so I'm right up on this mountain and I'm just gonna go ahead and drop our first material onto the mountain and see what we get. It looks horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, Maybe from a distance, it could look 
kind of cool. That's actually not half bad. It really is not half bad. Um, the fog is going to help us break up, you know, um, how dark that is, but I will also color correct it as well. But we need to do a couple things just to make sure that this is being wrapped around um, this mountain in the correct way. Okay, so I'll hop out of the camera. We'll get up in here. We'll take a look at what we're looking at. Let's double click and go into the node viewer. If you're not working in the node viewer, um, basically any program has it, any renderer has it. You should be in the node viewer. It's a lot easier to see all the things that are making up your texture or your, your shader versus, you know, diving through menu trees and whatnot. So let's go ahead and add a projection node to all this. You guys have seen me do this a million times before. And I really wish Octane had a way of dishing out this projection node to all the different image textures in one go. That'd be super nice. All right, let's set that to box. Okay, and that's going to be able that's going to wrap the texture around this mountain in a more uniform way. It's obviously way too tiny. So we need to scale it up by maybe a hundred times. And now we're getting something that looks a bit more uniform and a bit more correct. It looks really cool. Let's just roll with that. Let's say that's looking good for now. Let's set up our second one. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. Let's apply that coal wall to the mountain, all right? And let's change the projection. So we'll add that projection node and pipe it in to all the different image textures that make up this mega scans texture. And it's great because the mega scan textures, that's the whole point of this, is they come pre built, they're already built for you. And you guys know too that um, basically the black and white image textures, they only need to be recognized as black and white versus color. So the type is set to float by default in these materials. It's really nice. I think for some reason the specular isn't set to float. It should be. Um, but yeah, that's just an incredible quick way to get your textures going in your program. All right, let's set it to box. It's going to be way too tiny and we'll make it 100 times bigger. And it's pretty cool. That's looking pretty cool. It's like jet black. That's fun. Okay, so one way we can do this, one way we can break up these different materials is definitely with a, a mix material. We're gonna wanna do that. So let's go ahead and save your work. Make sure you guys are always saving. And if you're doing it the Chris Schmidt way, the Rocket Lasso way, we're gonna be saving iterations. So I'm on F, let's go to G. And basically as you make progress, you're saving out a new version. So you can always go back, you know, you can always make tweaks. And it'll be cool to, to document the process too. All right, so that's that's looking freaking sweet. Like that's a, that's a really nice texture. And if I hop back and view it through the camera, it's very dark. So we'll probably need to come up um, on the brightness with that. And I think as we go, the lighting and everything will kind of bring itself around and come together as we continue working. And yeah, so you guys are asking questions about the character. Oh, Gilbert. Uh, hey, bud. So, Jameer, you say, can we use a different rig but use the same animation? Um, by rig, you mean a different character? You can change out the skin. You can use a different character skin. You're really trying to get out, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> But you cannot change the the animation. You cannot change the bones. Um, the character needs to move and walk like this character is moving and walking. Definitely change out the way the character looks. But leave the way he's walking, okay? He or she. It's kind of nondescript. Um, because the whole point is I want to blend all of your guys' renders together. And have them look like they're looping together. And you can't do that if you change out the walk cycle. All right, so let's go ahead and make a mix material and we'll add both of these rock textures to that mix material, okay? 
and we'll add that mixed material to our mountain. And that's going to be a perfect 50 50 half and half split between both materials and god dang it this thing always crashes every time i open up a mixed material in uh in octane every time i knew it was going to happen too that's why i made it made sure to save jeez it's like it's relentless But I've never made a volcano before. I'm super excited to to see how we create this volcano, starting from a base default, you know, kind of material in Cinema 4D and bringing it out to something that looks like this. This is, of course, uh, Mount Mount Doom in Mordor. Uh, come on, Cinema. All right. Full Spectrum Studios. All right. You say, I get crashes every time I do the mixed material that way. If you do it inside of the node editor, it doesn't crash. Let's give it a shot. So let's go ahead and grab a, a mixed material. Boom. All right. We're going to say material one is this rock. And then we bring in material number two, the coal mine layer. We'll go ahead and shift click that and it'll bring in the whole the whole hierarchy all right material two fantastic and then let's go ahead and apply that to our mountain give it a quick render So now this is mixing between both textures um, by 50-50. So, so uh, it's set to 0.5. If I go to 0, we'll go to one texture. If I go to 1, it'll go to the other texture. 0.5 is right smack dab in the middle. But what I want to do is break this up. Um, last time we used noise, all right? We used uh, octane noise to break it up. But let me try a fall off map. Let's try a fall off and see, see what that does. So by default... It's actually pretty sweet. What a fall off is doing, if I solo it, okay, it's not really doing much. Um, I figure the easiest way to show you what's happening, let's just take two RGB spectrums and we'll say that this rock cliff layer, we'll pipe that into the albedo, which is the color, and we'll color it. Yeah, it looks like it's set to white, okay? And then let's do black for this other one We'll set that to black so you can get a, an idea of how this fall off map is breaking up these two textures okay so with this one um, I think it's basically saying anything that is facing the no anything that's on the outside of the model is going to be a certain texture that's what normal versus I ray is that's by default now if we select the fall off node and we change it to um, the 90 degree option, what that's going to do, I believe, is say anything that's up top is going to be a certain look. Anything that's at the bottom is going to be another look. And finally, we have the 180 degree option, which I feel like is the opposite 
we don't want that one. We want the 90 degree one that goes from top to bottom. I think that'll be a cool look. So let's change that back. We'll go 90 degree and let's go ahead and maybe the skew factor we can adjust. And that's just how much of one we see versus the other It kind of crunches it. And what you can also do is give it a, a gradient and you can crunch that gradient down to really show more of one or less of the other, right? So it's just like levels in After Effects or Photoshop. You're kind of just crunching that, that layer down. But we'll leave it as uh, by default, right? So we'll go ahead and we'll pipe back in the actual color. And reload our scene. Devon Williams. What up, Devon? Dude, Devon is one of my very best friends. One of my very, very best friends. Um, Devon, so I'm doing this render, and it kind of looks like a Death Stranding render. I'm, like, pretty inspired by it. Um, and, dude, I set up the model you got me for my birthday. Uh, let, me, let me show you guys real quick. So, Devon got me this, like, Sam Porter Bridges uh, Death Stranding figurine super freaking cool um he sent this to me for my birthday earlier this year and it is one of the best coolest gifts i've got in a very long time it's set up at my uh corridor corridor desk but okay let's take a look at this and make sure things are looking good all right so i accidentally piped that into the wrong section that's why it didn't work. Boom. So we get a little bit of differentiation here in the texture and the way it's broken up. That feels super cool. I dig that a lot. Now we can also change the way, again, this fall off map is crunched down. So we can see more of one texture, less of the other. if you break this up in the right way. You can also take the skew factor and crunch that down to just get a different look as well and differentiate between these two different vibes. But I, I like that a whole lot. I think it looks really good. We can take the color correction node for both of these guys and we can take the gamma maybe to like 0.5 and Maybe 0.75 or 0.9. Basically, you can color correct it however you like. Whatever fits your scene the best. That, look to me, looks too dark. But once we get our fog in here, the horizon fog, and it should, should pop in. You know, the fog is really going to wash out the look of this thing pretty quickly. And it's not showing up for some reason. But that is all good there it is yeah so you see the how the horizon fog like breaks up um, and just fades out that mountain but I still think it's a little too dark we can tweak that though um, based off of this reference so you can see that everything kind of bleeds up into this mountain and the sky is very dark around it and everything kind of is brought together by the atmosphere and the fog layers. So I'll go back into the mix material. I'll select both of those color corrections and maybe we will just say, hey, it's gonna be 0.5 or 0.2. 0.2 might be a bit much, but we can bring the brightness up. and start to get us something that's like a little a little different here but what we're gonna do next is we're actually going to add some jagged rocks around this mountain um, in order to you know again it's all based off the reference you know we put this reference together in the first episode of this environmental master class and we want to follow the reference that's the whole point so you can see all these different little jaggedy pieces of mountain all around um, your main mountain 
and you're going to see the difference and you're going to see those those little like foreground mountains pop out because we're going to have some fog and atmosphere behind them as well. So what we want to do is kind of cherry pick some of these models here in bridge and scatter them around our mountain in a in a unique way. We're going to do it one by one to make sure that it looks really nice and it's perfect and it and it really fits, right? So let's see. This is looking fine. Um I'm wondering if we could do this two different ways. If we could potentially take this mountain right here, control drag to duplicate, scale it down, and then change the seed. We come back up to landscape and we take the seed to like 10. Oh, I guess that's not the one. Wait, which one is this? Here we go. Yeah you know you take the seed to any different number that's going to give you a different look and automatically that that feels better to me um i'm liking that look and we need to push it behind these mountains so let's let's do this let's go to option and uncheck the check camera option okay that will allow us to hop out of the camera and kind of move around our scene a little bit and as we move things it's updated in the viewport okay so i want to wrap this mountain with different kind of uh, mountain mountainy features and I want to angle them in towards the mountain so maybe what I'll do here is we'll do this with a, a target so I'll give the mountain a target tag somewhere maybe under rigging um, where would it be Hmm, they changed all their tags. So uh, shift C will find you anything in the program. So you can say target and give it a target tag. It's an animation tag. All right, cool. And then I'm going to make a null object. Actually, no, I'll select this mountain, hold control, and then make a null. And that will spawn the null right in the middle of the, the object you had selected. Okay. Let's move that up into space just a little bit. And then we'll say this target that we put on this mountain right here. Let me make that easier for you to see. Um, it's gonna be looking for a target. So the target will be this null. Boom. Okay. Um, and now it's kind of it's pointed that way. We want these mountains to be tilted towards this main mountain. So you can see how using a target will orient that in that way and when I duplicate this it's going to point towards that target regardless so the more we make it doesn't matter it's all going to be pointed that way so we can move this null up and down to control the angle of each one of those and you can come in here and also no, you can't tweak that but what this will give us is a quick way to get the look we're going for um, and then we can come back later and we can delete the targets and, and add little details and tweaks afterwards. Okay, so let's keep working on it. Let's change the seed of this because we don't want any one mountain to look the same. So we'll just change that to 10. And consistently go back to our reference to see what's working and what's not working. Okay. So this guy back here, if you can see, is hovering just over the mountain. And it looks like little rocky shelves, which I really like because you'll get that nice underglow underneath from the lava. I definitely want to replicate that. Charles yeah man you're like yo shout out to all those boys listening to ambient music watching these i'm listening to it right now um i got it on shuffle it's the best um it's such a vibe man yeah i got the ambient music making these ambient yeah, environments i love it it keeps me super uh what's the word super creative man it's the music that really gets me creative so let's just switch between these seeds until we find something that we like
you know, that's not bad. We could maybe rotate this around. No, it's not going to let us because of the target tag. Let's keep adding a few more, okay? Let's just add a few more. And one of the one of the the contest requirements was to not touch the mountain or change the silhouette of the mountain too much. So I'm being very aware of that. I don't want to start adding more mountains like all up around this. I want this to be the focus, the central point of of the scene. So I'm keeping that in mind while adding these mountain figures around the main mountain, all right? Ooh, that's good. See, that has a nice little rocky piece on it. And I can always come back into this camera here. And we can adjust the, the height of these guys to get us that like that shelf that rock shelf look that'll be around like the back side of this thing I don't like how like how circular this one is. So I'm gonna just keep changing the seed until I find something I like. Very nice. I'm just trying to give it like some depth here and make sure that there's an actual like differentiation between the space um, between this foreground mountain and this background mountain. So we can add some fog and stuff in between. So I'm going to keep duplicating and changing the seed. That's pretty cool. I like that. Very cool. And we'll keep going. Changing the seed to find something that looks right. Maybe one more off to the side here. Like a lot of small ones is a good idea. But okay, let's go ahead and if we delete these targets, are they gonna change? Nope, perfect. So let's hop out of the camera. It 
and see what we can see here. So that looks, that's looking pretty sweet. Um, we can rotate these around to get different looks as well. And we're just adding like depth and layers to to this mountain. That's perfect. That like shelf, rocky shelf is amazing. Sweet. So I'm a fan of that. I like how that looks. Um, now, I don't know if we need to change out the texture. Um, let's go to 100%. Let's just call this one and we'll see what we can see. Welcome everybody. If you guys are just joining, we are taking um, a stock mountain in Cinema 4D and we're turning it into something like this here. Um, a volcano with a bunch of different foggy layers in the foreground that lead up to this giant lava flow peak with everything coming down the side. So I think we're at a point now where we can start adding the lava flow elements down the side of this mountain and giving it a really cool look. And we'll break up the look here with uh, with some noise. So we have some hot red glow with some warm white glow and and, uh, and really split that up. We'll get some glow on the back side of the mountain. There's a little undercast here, under light on the back of these guys. And then we'll wrap it up with this the steam vents and the, actually an animated steam vent that will use like action VFX elements as a PNG with alpha to, to get that look and I'll walk you guys through that whole thing so I'm very excited very very excited you also also have to realize too like if you're working on something and it looks like butt like right now this mountain that looks like butt because there's no atmosphere you have to realize that there's it's going to get better. All right, guys, like it's going to get better from here. Um, and I'm not just saying this to say like, Oh, hang in and keep watching until the end. No, like I'm saying this for you guys, because there are times where I get discouraged when creating something and it, because it doesn't look the way I want it to feel or want it to look when creating it. And I'll get, I'll get impatient with myself and I'll get bummed out and it'll cause me, I've quit certain, um, you know, certain renders or certain piece, certain drawings, I've given up on them because I'm like, you know, it's not looking how I want it to look right now and it should be. So I'm giving up. No, just stick in. Okay. Take the time and make it look really cool. I promise you're going to be surprised with yourself when you actually stick in and continue working on something. You're going to get a really, really cool result at the end. So don't worry about it. You know, don't, don't stress too much about it. Also, I just got an idea. I think that the, um, the mountains are super dark in the background. I think we can actually darken up this mid-ground layer, this little sandy area. So we can, we can darken that up, and that's going to help us kind of blend into the mountain in the background. But I'm not going to worry about that right now, again, because we're here to make, uh, make this mountain look legit. So I'm wondering if I can come into my mountain material and we take our transform nodes for our uh, for a mountain and we, we, we scale them down. So we take it down to 50 instead of 100. I think that looks a little bit better. I think that certainly looks a little bit better. The coal mine wall, let's see, where are you at? Yeah, this guy right here. Maybe we take that one. What if we take that one to 200? What does that look like? 
Interesting. What if we take it to one? So it looks like the coal mine wall is like our main kind of our main texture here. I'm wondering if we can reveal a bit more of the other texture. Yeah, like this, you know, so that's revealing more of our main texture or the other texture rather. And we can take that guy and we can scale that down maybe to 30. Okay, so now you start to see um, tiling, which we definitely don't want. So let's take it back to 50 and then let's take uh, the coal mine wall back to 50. Re-render our scene. Huh. And you get a crash. That's how it happens. Um, so you gotta gotta make sure you're saving your stuff. Invert. Dude, you about you riding on thin ice right now, son. You say, who am I? What am I doing? Well, my name is Clinton Jones. Welcome to the stream. Um, I'm a director and VFX artist, and I like to take every Saturday to basically teach you guys a little bit of what I know um, when it comes to visual effects. So. Um, for those of you who don't know, I work at Corridor Digital and, you know, we got a show called VFX Artists React where we, you know, we break down visual effects all the time, every single Saturday, basically. Um, let's go ahead and open this up real quick. I think this is the most recent one. Yep. Awesome. And I'll just save this as a new version. But yeah, we didn't lose anything. We, we got all of our mountain stuff in place. But yeah, the whole reason that you all are here um, is, is to learn, right? We're all here to learn and grow together in the passions and the, the hobbies that we really enjoy, but don't do enough of on the weekend or during the week. So we're taking this time together to do it together. Um, so invert, I hope you're, you're here and you're ready to learn and you want to learn some VFX. If not, you know, hang out, just have a good time. And if you're not trying to have a good time, then boy, boy just make it pleasant for the others that's all i ask all right y'all so let's keep this up okay let's go ahead and render the scene and let's just try and get that scale down and then we'll go in and we'll start adding this lava flow which i'm super amped for that's what i'm most excited for all right Welcome to everybody just popping into. Um, I hope you guys are having a good Saturday. I hope you guys had a good week. Um, you know, I've been working super hard, super hard. Um, I mean, this whole year has been a tough one. Been basically working two jobs at once, you know, the corridor job and then um, my channel here. So it's been it's been intense. It's been a really tough one. And I really got to make sure to take the time to take breaks. That's my biggest thing. I've been biting off a whole lot. All right. So let's let's work on the scale here. So we said we wanted this guy, both of these guys at 50. We brought those down to 50 and then we actually cranked the gradient to reveal a bit more of this other texture here. 
Maybe we take the coal mine wall and we go back to 100 because that was actually, that wasn't looking too bad. Sweet. Okay, that's that's not half bad at all. Coal mine wall. Let's go to 300. Let's see what the heck we're seeing. One. So I'm not, it doesn't look like we're getting that big of a difference here. But we've set this up in a way for it to be easily accessible and easily tweakable here. Um, with this fall off map so we can change it to the iray version and get a different look and hopefully it doesn't crash on us save 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 but okay we can always come back to that let's work on the lava flow okay this is this is going to be the biggest look to creating this volcano so I'm going to select the, our main mountain, okay, and let's do, let's do, uh, I'm going to duplicate it. I'll rename this to main mountain back, and that's for backup, and then we have main mountain, and I'm going to turn off the backup, holding alt, I'll click this once, turns these little, these lights green, press them again, and it turns them red. The, f the top one, the light is for the viewport. The bottom one is for the render. So if we were to take this main mountain and we turn off the top light, you're not going to see it in the viewport, but you will see it in the renderer. If I turn it off in the renderer, obviously you don't see it there, but if I turn it back on in the viewport, you see it here. So, you know, it's handy. I use these things all the time. Um, so uh, let's... We've created our backup, right? Let's hop out of the camera and get up in here and see what we can see, okay? To create this lava flow, what I'm thinking about doing is, is basically this. If we go to wireframe mode and we take a look at this thing, we want to select these polygons and basically give the polygons that we select um, a material, an emissive material that, that you know emits light. But I think these are a little too chunky. This is a little too broken up um, to get us a nice clean line like we see here um, in our actual reference. Now there's different ways to do this. I could certainly create like some sort of drip looking um, effect in Photoshop and that might not be the worst way to do it. Um, I think the thing that's keeping me from from doing that is is basically a realistic looking um, brush, right? Because if I go in here and I look at this, I guess it is all kind of just branching off and spilling off. And I guess that's what I'd be doing if I were to be selecting polygons. So maybe we do this in Photoshop instead of Hmm. The only reason I'm not doing it in Photoshop is because I want to actually have the lava flow around the mountain here in a realistic way. But there's not that many little mountains that break this up. So you see it, it, it runs down the mountain and then it'll split off like this. Now what you could do is probably do some sort of like simulation using like X particles or something and have a bunch of particles and draw you can draw a line down this or draw some sort of spline down this that could work as well and the cool thing about 3d is the fact that you can do one thing like 10 different ways I'm not gonna do all 10 different ways I'm gonna choose one way and go with it Um, and yeah, I'm using I'm using bridge materials for the mountain. Super great program. Boom, looking super nice. 
Um, I just chose two different ones and then, you know, blended between the two. I might come back later and choose different ones to, to mix it up with. Um, but what do you guys think? I'm going to leave it to you guys. Should I make this mountain editable and select polygons and then apply material, a material to that polygon? Or should I go in Photoshop and create like some sort of, uh, you know, uh, like lava mat and drop that on top of this mountain? How do you, how do you guys think I should do this? I'm going to leave it up to you. Um, invert, what's the difference between Cinema 4D and Maya? Um, basically, Maya is more of a studio program in, in, in the sense that, okay, both of them, Cinema 4D and Maya, they both um, are 3D programs. You can create 3D work inside these programs. And, um, you know, you could do an animated short film with Cinema 4D. You could do an animated short film with Maya. But the difference is that Maya is more set up for studios in the sense that you have um, like a modeling department followed by a texturing department. And you pass that off to the lighting department and then you pass that off to the rendering department. Um, so it's kind of like set up for a pipeline in a studio. Cinema 4D, however, um, very similar to like Blender, these programs are more for like the individual. You can certainly use them in a studio, but it's not built for a studio. This is built for individual artists um, and they just, they do everything really well. Um, and it's not split up like it would be split up for a studio. That's kind of the, that's like the main difference, at least in my, my personal, um, personal experience. I have used Maya, um, for about three months, but Cinema 4D has been my longstanding go-to 3D program. I love it a lot. And a lot of people here enjoy Blender as well. All right. So let's check. What do you guys want to do? Um, yeah, you're saying, okay, just make it editable and have a back, a backup, uh, sculpt, oh, sculpt it. Okay. It could be interesting. Assign polygons so I can edit down the road. Yeah. Sim would, <laughs> sim would be more time consuming. That's definitely true. Yeah, invert Maya. Any 3D program is very complicated, very confusing. And you really will have the best experience and the best time in any 3D program if you find a reason to learn it. So if you don't have a reason to learn a 3D program, it's going to be boring and it's going to seem monotonous and whatnot. Um, but if you can find ways to, to use the program and come up with reasons as to why you would use the program, that's really when your mind starts going crazy and you can come up with cool ways, cool, interesting ways. And it's just like with anything, like if you're not into golf, you're not going to care about a golf, um, anything, you're not going to care about anything about golf. But if you have a reason to get into golf, you're going to start researching it and look, looking into it. So I don't have a golf, um, hole to fill in my life. I don't need to go out and golf, but if I did, I'd, I'd find a way to learn a little bit more about golf, you know? Okay. So guys, it looks like we're going to do, uh, we're just going to select these polygons. I think that's going to be the fastest way and it'll be the, the easiest way. I think. See you Norlin. Thanks for joining man. Um, okay. So we, we backed up our mountain. Let's go ahead and subdivide it. That means we're going to add more polygons to this in order to get cleaner lines. So as you can see, um, we can add to the depth and the width. So let's try 600 on the depth, maybe 800. So these numbers need to be about double. So 400, one to two, right? In order to appear as squares. So maybe we just double that from there. So we go 400 by, um, no, I'm sorry, 800 by 1600. And I think from a distance, we're going to be okay. That's going to give us the best look. All right. 
Um, this guy, these guys back here, we can probably take these down to 200 by 200 um, so that they're not as dense, you know? Because, again, it's all about saving computer juice. you got to save your computer juice. All right, Invert, thanks for stopping by, man. Thanks for asking some good questions. Okay, so guys, let's go ahead and make this mountain editable. Boom, I hit C, and it's editable now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause the viewer here because we don't need to see it. And we can come in here, we can start, oop, we can come in here and start selecting. If I set my radius to one, I can start selecting a, like lava drips, just like that, yeah? So let's do it from, how are we going to do this? What do you think? Go back to the camera like this and come in here and start adding little lava flow areas. Um, I definitely want to reference that concept art we put together. So I'm going to open up Pure Ref and I'm going to go ahead and drop in an image. Um, let's see one moment guys let me just open this up cool so now I have this in here and I can zoom in um, let's try getting this down to like this and then we can really see this while we work so it starts up at the top and it kind of speckles off and breaks off as it gets down towards the bottom so that's what we're going to to replicate let's hop out of the camera let's come into this kind of view here and I'm gonna get rid of or hide rather all these other mountains that we created to just give me the best view of this one mountain right here Sweet. Okay. So I set my selection tool to uh, a radius of one. I wonder if I can go point one. No, it's only one. Mode will be normal. Sweet. All right, cool. All right, so let's give this a shot. I'm just gonna, I'm holding shift in order to um, select multiple bits. So I can do this bit here. And if I go over here, it's not gonna work because I'm not holding shift. But if I hold shift, then I get both, right? So let's come through here and let's just go to town. Um, I'm just gonna do like little, little bits. And there's a way to hide this gizmo. I think it's like Alt S. It's definitely not Alt S. Um, <laughs> let me Google it. If you guys can find the answer before, before I can find out in this tutorial, you guys get bonus points. It's oh, okay, okay. All right, so I got the answer. Does anybody know? I don't see it. It's Alt D. All right, Alt D is what we need, not Alt S. So we'll go back and we'll go again. All right, so Alt D will hide your gizmo. That way you can kind of keep it out the way. So let's try it again, yeah? So I'm just coming through here and I'm like, just getting a little bit of lava flow and it always starts from the top and comes down and it breaks off and goes on these different paths and it looks like it kind of breaks off and like 
speckles off down here off to the side we have these different like broken up layers of lava there's some that come down and runs down here I'm kind of sh going around going along the shape of our mountain something like that off to the side and they're all connected that's the thing is they're all connected so this goes over the edge this goes over the edge there and it's all kind of seeping and flowing down our mountain and joining up into these main channels these main streams So this all flows downwards, boom, right, kind of flowing down here, hitting these these little crevices and flowing off to the side like this. And holding shift to really get all of these points down here. And I want it, I want to actually have a lava pool down here. And we'll do that later. We'll certainly make that look nice a little bit later. But this is just for all the main flow. And we can always come back and add more to this too. You know, if we don't like the look we have, we can we can come back and and do more with this. And alpha mat, yes, I absolutely will add an emissive texture to this um, this polygon selection here. Let's see what this looks like. I'm excited. So I'm going to go to select and I'm going to hit set selection. All right. So that's going to give us a selection for a mountain. And let's go ahead and make a octane diffuse material. I'm in octane. Um, you can do do this and whatever. You guys are probably in Blender doing this too. That's okay. But we'll make an emissive texture. So I'll make a black body emission. We'll come in here and we want to give it a, a color. All right. So let's first actually let's apply this to our material so I'm going to let's see under the main mountain we have this selection tag this triangle I'm going to apply the, the emission texture to our main mountain and then I'm going to right here in this little selection box drag that triangle and now just those polygons we had selected if I double click it that'll just be the emissive texture all right so let's go back to camera view I'm super amped to see how this looks and let's render it and see what happens interesting so my f the first thing I see is it doesn't appear to be that shiny and it looks very pixelated so the pixelated look now I wonder if I can do this with there's another there might be another way to do this in cinema that allows us to easily and quickly you know adjust but let's keep going down this path and see if we need to change okay so we'll add our mountains back in that we added and let's set this to 0.5 and let's first make sure that this is actually glowing okay so surface brightness we'll check that okay so now it's actually glowing 
let's set the temperature down to like a thousand even 500 which that looks insane um let's <laughs> let's try 750 thousand and maybe what we need to do maybe it's, it's too bright so we set that to 50 Yeah, a vertex map. I think a vertex map is what I'm looking for. Yeah, definitely. I think I think using the vertex painter or vertex map is gonna help me. Um, help me make that look smoother. But right now, let's go ahead and lock in the light. Let's lock in this look here of our emissive, and then we'll come back and we'll we'll tweak the. Uh, the actual lava flow okay so one thing at a time let me save a new scene so I'm just gonna have this off to the side here um, and I'll bring it in as I, as I need to as I reference it so a texture let's go ahead and drop in an RGB spectrum texture And already something happened. It's actually giving the mountain itself some glow, which is really cool and kind of what we want, kind of what we're going for. Um, I'm going to actually add some mountains around the back of this thing. Alt D to bring our gizmo back in. And I just want to bring these mountains around the back side so that we can get some nice glow on the back of our mountain which we'll probably use with like some lights or something um, let's change the seed Yeah, just like that. Cool. So in Octane, you can set the camera in under the camera imager to uh, saturate to white. If I set that to zero, that'll basically look like that. It'll look kind of ugly. But if I set it to point two, anything that's super saturated and super bright will be saturate or will be kind of uh, set to a white instead of the actual color. It just kind of matches real life a little bit more. Um, the flow of the lava, like the, the, the thickness of these streaks is making the mountain look smaller. That's true. I'm going to go back and we're going to adjust that. But right now what I'm trying to lock in is the lighting. Okay. So let's see. I should be able to just choose the color unless this needs to go. If I take this to like a blue, interesting. Okay, so let's let's try like a red orange color. Uh, yeah, and that's not that's really not the look we're going for. It's really intense. So maybe it's the surface brightness that's blowing that out. But at the end of the day, like this does have to be bright. Um
wonder is it, is it supposed to be distribution instead? And we definitely want to break this up with some noise. Projection will be uh, UVW to uh, XYZ to UVW for noise. And we'll give it a transform as well. And we're going to break that up. Let's see. I'm wondering if that will go into distribution. And then we take the noise, give it. Yep, okay, so that looks half correct. And then maybe the noise has a, a gradient ramp on it. And that's gonna determine our color which that looks like it works. Um, but it's looking like hmm. You know, I wonder if we go with the Photoshop route I'm wondering if that will be better. Certainly we can do the vertex painting route. But if we go into Photoshop, I'm just gonna open Photoshop real quick. I'm wondering if we can do something pretty quick. So let's transform this down. Something like that. We also want to, we probably want to mix this with a, a, f a gradient, or I'm sorry, a f uh, my mind, my mind has gone to fall off. Yes, we want to mix that with a fall off. And we'll say it is a 90 degree or it should be 180 degree. Very nice. So the best way to test if this fall off is working is to just make a sphere. Bring it up. Drop a new material on here. Put the fall off into the diffuse channel. That's by default working uh, normal versus eye array. And then we have 90 degree, which is it looks like that's what we want and then 180 degree let's take that 180 and let's give it a gradient and we'll crunch it but i'm pretty sure the the 90 degree is what we're going for and we can flip it we can say negative one so it's inverted. So that'll always inform me if I just need to test something and figure out if it's working, I'll bring it down to the most basic mode. So 
So go back to the fall off, 90 degree, and this can be six. I think we can solo this too. Yeah, you gotta find that find that sweet spot. And in in the octane camera, you can actually give it some glow as well. I think that'll definitely help. Post processing uh, will enable that. And we definitely don't want all those lens flares. So we'll take the glare amount to one. Um, we'll set the angle to negative 90. And I'm just gonna take the glare blur all the way up. And in fact, I'll just take that, that angle to zero. So it's looking like a Minecraft mountain right now just because of the quality of those brush strokes. So we can do Let's see, if we were to do vertex painting, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. Um, I certainly do know though that if we come into Photoshop and we make, say like a, a 4K map here, so 3840 by 3840, or no, technically it's 38, was it 3860? No, 3840. All right, we got crying babies in the background. It's time to shut the door. All right. So I'm wondering if we can like piece together a water texture um, or like water drip texture there's not a lot of water textures online but we might just have to do this from hand so or by hand so I'm gonna come in here and let's Switch this up. So we get something like this. But that is too thick. This really needs to be built up in a very, very small, tiny way. So my size here will be five pixels. And let's just paint out one half of this mountain and we'll go down we'll go just go down the line and see what we can do
We'll see if this looks any good. If there's an easier way to do this, I am all ears. So I'll have some streams break off and then rejoin, like this one here. And like, there's definitely going to be a lot more streams up towards the top. And it's kind of like a river system. That's really what this is, is a river system. So we'll get more and more detailed with this. And it's really just experimenting. I'm here to experiment. And you can set your brush size even smaller for these kind of little bits down here. And you know, it's kind of like lightning actually. Maybe lightning is the best um, kind of reference for this. And I might be able to take a bunch of different lightning images and use those to build out a map, a lava map, you know? But it's very, very interesting how this looks both like a river and lightning, which is pretty crazy how nature works, you know? And I'll come in with a black brush and erase some of this This is going to help break it up a little bit. Give it a little bit more texture. I 
VFX wizard, that's a good idea, using a height map of the mountain to get a nice reference. Um, I do think, though, that this could potentially give me something that, that would work, just because my mountain doesn't have too many features on it. I'm kind of faking these little, like, little turns and angles and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and save this out and see what we're looking at. Um, and I'm going to make sure, if I hit Control R, I'm going to set this up so that it's in the center point right here. So we'll take this guy and we'll just get that right in the center point right here. And we could easily just, you know, duplicate duplicate this with Control J, spin it around so that we have some on the back side as well. And maybe what I can do is take both of these. Well, maybe, okay, here, control, um, we'll do control G to group everything to make sure that lock is turned off. I'm going to duplicate that control E to make it editable. And then I'm going to see what happens if I content aware fill these areas. I'm going to hit uh, shift backspace. Oh, interesting. It gives us a little something, but it doesn't really do much. It's fine. Let's take this. Let's save this as just like a PNG and see what happens. All right, so that's the before. That looks so bad. Um, so I want to do a mixed material once again. All right. So let's go into the node editor. And we, we want to basically break up the rock texture and the emissive texture with that map we just made. So let's go mix material, we'll create one. We'll pipe this rock mix material into mix material one. And then for material two, I'm just gonna drag in this emissive texture. Holding shift will get the entire hierarchy for you. You can right click and auto arrange it. And that goes into material two. And out of the amount, we have an image texture And that's going to be that map we just made, the lava map. So let's apply, let's actually invert this. So we'll switch, we'll switch these around. And we'll set this to float because it's a black and white image. And now what we'll do is just apply that new mix material to the mountain and see what we get. reload our scene and take a look at the difference so our mapping is off we need to change the projection the projection is going to be box and we need to transform it as well we'll transform it up to 100 and what we also need is it cannot loop so we just need to select the image texture and instead of wrap around we'll do black color so that way it's only being it's only being added once to our model and i'm just going to use the transform tools to try and get it to sit directly on top of this mountain
Hmm. So it's proving difficult to get this right on top of the mountain. So it's it's doing something, but it's it's difficult to control. Certainly, a difficult to control it this way. <sighs> um. Yeah, I'm wondering if the vertex paint is the option here. Um, so we're kind of just going through going through the options to figure out the best way to do this. It doesn't look half bad, but I'm also seeing areas, these white areas where um, we don't really, we don't want any white areas. So really what it's going to be here is if we get rid of the noise, we kind of need to get rid of the noise so that it's all just lava back here. Yeah, world creator terrain stuff I think would be useful, but I don't have world creator. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it does need bloom. So you can come into the camera imager and work on that to get that look going. And it's too red. I feel like it needs to be a mixture between red and yellow. So maybe what we could do with this gradient instead of black, obviously it's gonna be kind of an orangish yellowy color. That is starting to look close, closer at least. The bloom is just way too intense. So maybe it starts out as red. No, it starts out as like a white yellow. and then cools off to like this red, reddish color. But that's not, that's not the worst. But I do think, honestly, coming coming into like uh, Google and doing something like uh, lightning texture, and we use this as a way to build up 
and create our lava flow. So we would take something like this. Um, so we do like texture uh, lightning on black maybe. I mean, we could also do this in After Effects too. Because After Effects does have a lightning plugin. But you know what I'm saying? You see how this like branches off? There's like these main streaks and then they branch off and get weaker and weaker. It's exactly what we're going for. This kind of a look here. Lava flow coming all down throughout all this. That, um, I could see that really working. It also looks very similar to a tree. It's really crazy how nature uh, has all these different patterns and similarities. But remember how I said, like, you'll create something and it just won't look that good um, and you need to keep working on it? Well, that's exactly what I need to keep doing here if I want this to look um, halfway decent. I need to keep coming in here and keep, like, making this more detailed. Because this isn't half bad. I do think. Um, one of you guys gave the idea of coming in here like this. We'll do, we'll make a new camera and we will hover right above our image. Negative 90. And we'll just be right above our mountain. We can change our aspect ratio to 1000 by 1000 we we'll get right above here and we want the z depth that's what we're we're looking for so we'll go into our render settings octane render settings and we'll go down to octane renderer and under render passes info we'll do the z depth slider we'll work that and we'll try and get a look here that actually shows our mountain and it's not really <laughs> It's not really showing as much here. Let me get in closer, maybe. And it's just, it's not giving us that much height detail. Let's try again. You know, I want more detail in that, and it's not giving me what we need. So maybe we take this. Okay. We unlock it. And we save out a PNG. This will be our lava map reference. We'll come into Photoshop. We'll open up that reference. And didn't export the Z depth pass for whatever reason. So let me just grab this, hop into Photoshop, paste it, <laughs> and we'll crunch these levels down. Let's see if we can't get a look out of this. So white will be the bot. Let's actually invert it around. That doesn't invert. Okay. We'll invert it here. And then we'll throw some levels on it. And that kind of gives us something. Something to go with. Control Shift I will invert your selection. No, I do not want get Yeah. 
and you can go up to select and let's see, you know, image trim, and that'll just trim out all the transparent pixels. And we could use this, you know, it's super, super tiny, but I think we could make something like this work in order for us to just have some sort of reference as to where this lava is going. If we want to continue down this path here, because it's, it's actually a more improved version of what we did originally. So I do think it is better. So I'm going to keep working on this here. That's not bad at all. You know, and then you get some like some lights back here that can really like punch up the look of this lava. So we have a light, we can bring it back in here. And we'll use this light to kind of shine um, and illuminate these, these little crevices here. So let's get in close. And we'll take the visibility and, and just turn off camera visible, right? So we're only seeing the, the glow from that light. And what you want to do is actually if we bring it down into these little crevices, we can just kind of scatter them all around down here to give us a nice look in this mountain. And we'll certainly set that to, um, let's go into the light and we'll say the texture is going to be an RGB spectrum. And we want that to be kind of like a, a reddish orange texture or color rather. Something like that. Because based on our reference, we can see that glow 
underneath, right? All back here. Um, usually, it's mostly it's mostly here I'm seeing it. That kind of underglow look. So I'm going to just scatter these behind the mountain and kind of shine them up onto these little crevices. What happened? Not enough memory. Interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. We'll save it as a new iteration. Call it J. And let's give it a, a little fresh reboot here and see what we can get. Zach, yes, yeah, certainly I could make them sphere lights or bi-directional. Um, I might, certainly might do that, but we'll see what it looks like at first, then we'll go back in. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different ways to go about this process and it's tough, you know, cause I feel like I don't want to waste your guys's time. So I don't want to keep like doing it one way and then stopping and going back, doing it another way. Um, but certainly that's kind of part of part of the process. It's part of, I think some of you might say it's part of the draw as, uh, you know, to these streams. But it's tough, you know, I'm finding a balance between experimenting and, and you know, just digging into different ways of doing things and also keeping it entertaining at the same time. So it'd be nice if, uh, you know, it'd certainly be nice if I can get it right the first time every single time. It'd be the most, the, f the fastest, quickest way, but it can't always be that way. And it usually never is especially when it's your first time doing something. If this was a tutorial that I was recording, um, you know, I'd, I'd have to basically do it two or three times before I actually did it. But since it's a live stream, I just don't have the time, especially since I have a full-time job at Corridor. It's a lot of work. It's certainly a lot of work. All right, let's render and see what we got. So we're getting that glow here on the mountain, which is exactly what we're going for. That's a really nice look. This guy can probably be turned around.
Don't know if this one's doing anything for us back here. Yeah, we can delete that. And this one here actually too, I don't think it's doing much for us either. It's really this one that's lighting up this little piece that I like a lot. And I also might just grab this light and we'll go ahead and hold control and we're going to pop this into the center of the mountain here. And I want to make it seem like there is a pool of lava underneath. So I'm going to underlight this whole mountain from this little crevice, okay? So that's certainly an interesting look. Um, I might take that down to like a hundred. I don't want it to be too crazy. I want to keep it kind of subtle. And there's some nice lava flow at the base as well. So, you know, I might have something like running through here, a light that runs through the center of this. So I'm going to continue duplicating these and just kind of basically do a small little stream throughout the center of this. And I'll drop these as low as I can bring them. And I'll see what kind of lighting that gives me. And I'll shine these back onto the rocks themselves. Yeah, you could put a volume around the entire volcano, certainly. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to do here. Basically, I want to have uh, different layers of fog in order to really uh, keep these mountains poking out and standing out. Now, one thing I really want to do here is add that atmosphere and add that fog in an interesting way. So I think you can certainly have some stuff like this. I think if we add this fog layer, and I feel like this fog should appear. I don't know why it's not appearing right now. There it is. If we duplicate that fog layer, So I'll control drag it so it's duplicated and we move it back towards the mountain. And we give the mountain just a bit of fog and atmosphere. So if we turn that on and off, it's very subtle. Let's see if we can't really work this into place. 
Oh, it's so thin. It's very thin. So we want to open this up a little bit more. And now this is when your computer starts to chug. And if you set the voxel size to a larger number, that'll really help you know, the viewport settings and it'll, it'll help, uh, save some more computer juice for you. Let's see what that looks like. All right, so the fog, definitely too thick. But we want the light to shine through, so I'll boost up the scattering phase. And I'll set the density to, instead of 0 0.01, 0 0.001. That's too much, 0 And it looks really cool because it starts to like um, diffuse the light back here and give it a really interesting look. Now, the little sandbar that is in front of the mountain needs to be darker. It's a little too much. So I'm going to find that. And let's actually hide the horizon fog from our viewport so we can see a little bit better. And I'm going to select that little bit, that landscape too, and it looks like it's this going after this mix material. So I want to darken that up. So with the mix material selected, let's go ahead and find out what that mix material is made from. So I think, let's see if I can come in here. It's tire soil and tire mud. So tire soil and tire mud. That's what the mix material is made from right there. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate both of these, all three really. So tire soil, tire mud, we duplicated those. And I'm going to call these dark, be the dark version. Because I want to basically darken these up in order to get the, the mid ground to match the background a little bit more. Now the octane mix material, I'll call this uh, dark mud as well. And I want to reference the new materials that I just made. Okay, so let's apply that new mix material 
to that layer and it looks like nothing changed, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and save. We'll hop into the node editor and let's go ahead and change both of these mud materials. I'm going to go ahead and auto arrange and make sure I'm holding shift. I'm able to move the entire hierarchy. We'll auto arrange that and this. Okay, so it's the diffuse that I want to adjust. So I'm going to drop a color correction node in between there. And let's just take the, let's try taking the gamma up to two on both of these and see what happens. Let's get rid of the fog for a second. Let's try darkening this up even more. Um, I want to give myself a, let's see. Let's render the region right in there. Cool. save and re-render the scene. So changing the brightness to zero doesn't too, do too much actually. So maybe what I need to do instead of adjusting that, maybe I just need to adjust the specular. Cause it might be just reflecting a ton. A ton of light here. Hmm. I'm going to hop out of the camera and see maybe why this is not darkening up. All right, so it's working. It's actually darkening. So I guess it's the the roughness. Let me try the roughness. And adjusting that. in fact it if it if it is the the specular all right so that's not reflective at all now so I'll go back into camera and see what that looks like all right so that looks horrible <laughs> that definitely looks horrible Having some reflection is obviously what we want, so 
Um, let's try changing that to a mid gray for both of these. And maybe we need to take the contrast of that to zero. That's starting to feel a little bit better. And we'll take the transform of the noise that's breaking it up to maybe 35. So it's just a little bit larger. Okay, cool. So we'll just make it a little bit more reflective because we don't want it to match the mountain color. We want it to be just a little brighter than the mountain color. So that's not, it's actually not that bad. Um, Cool, cool. Take that background fog, drop it on, and see what we get. <laughs> Liam, okay, so uh, I used this image here that I created in Photoshop to really get the lava looking nice. And I just did this with a brush. Um, and I adjusted basically the way it was sitting on top of the mountain just with rotational bits and transform and rotation. And I made sure that um, my camera, the post-processing on my camera, was glowing the that mountain mountainous lava back there so I want to set maybe that even more 200 and 100 to get that nice lava glow that looks super nice I added some lights back here too and a little bit of fog just to you know really kind of bring that bring that back in now I'm still not getting I'm still not getting this mountain um, exactly the way I want. So I think what I'm gonna do actually here is I'm gonna open up After Effects and we're gonna do a cool little trick. So I'm gonna add some like steam vents and stuff, actually animated steam vents. And I'm gonna do this by using um, different stock footage with, uh, with alpha baked in. So I'm gonna save it as a PNG sequence and I'm gonna place little cards around the mountain areas um, and around and behind the rocks so it looks like it's actually steaming so I've never done this before and I'm very excited to do so so what we're gonna do what is going on come on After Effects I literally just opened you and you're gonna crash on me like this Maybe I'll have to open a stable version of After Effects and not After Effects beta. My goodness. I'm gonna just maybe maybe I'll give it one more shot. If it does it again, then we've we've done what we can. <laughs> so yeah, I mean like this is really what we're going for. We're gonna add some trees and roots and rocks later, but I'm really trying to get the overall general feeling of the render down first before I start getting into the micro stuff. I'm not too worried about um, the foreground bits, like the you know the tree stumps. That's all stuff we can add once we make our landscape look really nice. Definitely get some fallen trees in here that we can that we can bring from mega scans, and maybe a little bit of uh, of uh, what do I use? Forester, right? Is a program that I use for trees and whatnot. Okay, come on, After Effects. I think we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna import um, the small scale smoke plumes from Action VFX. Action VFX, if you guys are unfamiliar, is basically a website where you can download a ton of amazing stock footage. And this isn't sponsored by them, though it would be cool if it was, because I use their stuff all the time, but yeah, so small scale smoke plume is what I'm looking for. Small scale smoke plumes. These guys, boom. Uh, 
Perfect. Let's import those and see what we got. I also want to, let's put those in a folder. Smoke plumes. And then I'm also going to import the um, fog and atmosphere pack they have as well. So I'll just double click down here in the viewport or in the, uh, the project browser area. Atmosphere, smoke and fog volume two. So all this good stuff. We'll import that. So looking at the reference, okay, you can see there's a bunch of smoke kind of rising up and around the mountain. A lot of like, it looks like it's in a cloud almost. So I want to place a bunch of cards, um, a bunch of planes where these animated smoke layers can sit in between, okay? So back in After Effects, let's just take a look at what we're looking at. So these are some small scale stuff. This is probably too small for what we're doing. I want to find like hmm, maybe five or six really good ones. I'm going to export those and then we'll use those and put them on cards. So I'm just going to go through and find the best ones here. I don't want anything too small. That might not be bad. I also don't want anything too heavy um, or too opaque. And I want to fill a large area. So the ones that are like standing up pretty tall may not be the best for what we're trying to do. So I'm just looking in this window here. Oh, here's a good one. Yeah, that's great. Certainly want that. So it looks like it's this windy smoke that's going to do a good job for us. Yep, that's a good one. That's a solid one. And since we have 88 frames, we can move these around and shift these around to like uh, different um, different points of time in order to, in order to get a different look. All right, so let's check out the fog layers. Let's see what we got here. So this is some like low lying fog. I don't think that's going to be good for us. So let me just go through and see what we got. Um, there's something like this maybe. I don't know if that's going to be what we're going for. Maybe this one here. It's very subtle. It's almost like a cloud. Um, but I think that could be cool. So I'm going to pop that in. That's not bad. We can use that too. Um, really what I'm looking for is to make sure that the smoke stays within the frame. So I'm going to have to go through these and mask out um, the borders so they're black. Right? That's too much. I think that's good though. I think that's a nice look for us. So we'll, we have these six here that we'll use. So let's go through these. And basically, if you just hold down the uh, this mar this box tool, you can do the ellipse tool and double click it, and it'll give you a perfect ellipse around your image. I'm gonna go ahead and feather that, 
and then expand it. So just choke the mask in. So now we're only getting like just this little bit here. You're not seeing any edges, which is exactly what we want. Okay. So I can take that mask and I'm just going to duplicate it across everything. Weird, it didn't copy it how we wanted to. Yep, there we go. No borders, perfect. Exactly what we want. Awesome, awesome. Do the same for this guy. And for this last one. Cool, so now what we wanna do is, well first, we'll save our project file, obviously. We don't want to lose this. Um, transparent smoke. Awesome. Okay, so what you want to do, um, you want to get rid of this black. Okay, so the best way to do that is with Unmolt, which is a tool that um, you can get from, uh, what is it? Red Giant. It's a great red giant tool if you don't have it you could also use the built-in after effects one it's called like a remove color matting is that the one no i think it's still called unmolt in after effects it's like uh or uh transparent background alpha what is it alpha I know there's a free version of Unmolt around. I'm forgetting the name of the built-in After Effects one, but you're basically just getting rid of the black around your image. So Unmolt does a fantastic job of that. You can still see that you have, um, you know, your element, but when you turn on alpha, it's, it's actually looking really nice. So you could do, let's see, let's put in just like a gray background, 50% gray. Or even better yet, let's just load in our concept art. And that way we can check the alpha levels over our concept art. Let's see what it looks like. So this is our fog layer sitting nicely. I think I think that's great. And we'll want we'll want to apply the unmolt effect to all of our different smoke layers. Perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to go through and basically just export out um, these six different versions. I'm going to extend my duration. Project duration will go 2,000 frames, which should be plenty. And we'll just one by one do these PNG sequences. And if you don't have a PNG sequence um, setting already set up, let's do that. So basically, 
we can make a template, all right? In the setting, I always like to do underscore at the beginning because then it's always at the top. PNG sequence. And we'll edit and we will just make it a PNG sequence. Great, fantastic. Um, you're gonna want it with alpha. So it's RGB plus alpha. Very, very important, it's RGB plus alpha. Millions of colors plus, that's fine. I think that's uh, either eight or 16 bit. Trillions of colors is either 16 or 32 bit, I forget. But you, it's very important, it's RGB plus alpha. You want the alpha, okay? So that's a PNG sequence with alpha. We'll hit okay. And let's find a spot for this render, okay? So VFX, this will be Render output is exactly what we want. So this is windy smoke. And we'll let that go. So wow, it looks like that's gonna take a minute. Let's um let's focus on some other stuff while that goes, yeah. But first, how's everybody doing? Are you guys hanging in there? Give me some thumbs ups if you guys are feeling okay. Um, we've been going for two and a half hours. Probably go for another another thirty minutes, maybe another hour um, on this once we get these like steam jets going. But I think it's about time to get a kombucha because I am feeling a little thirsty. And we can always work on our lava flow texture here to get that really really nice so I'm gonna keep working on that now I'll be right back I'm gonna grab a drink I'll see you guys in like two seconds <laughs> Man, Burke, that is the goal. The render has got to look cooler than the reference. That's certainly what we're going for. Um, next week, I am going to talk about my process of switching out this character. Because I'm going to photo scan myself in my camping gear and um, make it all sci-fied out. And I'm going to walk you guys through my process of that which I'm very excited for. I'm, I'm excited for this whole thing, really. This is a quite a blast and a good time. It's a very good time. And Art Day, you are correct. The PNG sequence is to retain the alpha information um, in, the, in the layer so that I'm able to just drop it into the mountain in the background. Now, this is a trick that, um, if you guys know Ian Hubert, he is maybe one of Blender's very best artists. And he uses this trick a whole lot. He's constantly doing like atmospheric smoke stuff in the background with this trick. Looks like this is gonna take a minute. So, let me, let me see if this lightning trick works. And what we need, we gotta go to tools, we gotta go to size, and we'll set it to large. Cause we want high quality images of lightning that we can drop over this Maybe this one here, this is pretty, this is not bad. But it has like all the, um, that's, that looks like After Effects.
Uh, this is amazing. This is definitely the vibe here. That's so cool. But it's so tiny, that's the issue. It's so tiny. We'll crunch it down. So there's no glow. But we don't want to crunch it so much that we lose the details. And that's kind of what's happening here. So maybe it's something like that. And we set that to screen. And now we have this as an element for our lava. Which that, I mean, that totally looks legit to me. That gets us like a real natural look for the lava flow there. And I just want to find like some larger images, some higher quality images. Man, lightning is so cool. Awesome. Very large, super high quality. So we'll make it black and white. We'll drop the saturation and control L will give us our levels. So we crunch that down and I'm really looking at the fine detail down here. So like this stuff, I don't want to lose this. So Maybe that's as far as I'd go, something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and erase. Or just with a black brush is totally fine. Let's go ahead and make this rasterable. So we'll ren renderize that layer or rasterize it rather. And we'll just paint black in here. We'll tank the flow up and the hardness up. And I just want to get rid of this like stuff that isn't really lightning or is that the it's the lightning behind the trees. And we'll come in here and just clean this up a little bit. Cause I'll crunch this down a little bit further. I'll get rid of this guy. These ones that aren't really tethered. This is just a cool, interesting way to think outside the box and get a look. So let's try that again. 
let's actually do a levels adjustment modifier. We'll crunch that down until we like it right there. Something like that. Cool. Feels good to me. And we'll erase it in the areas where we don't want it. Okay, so basically we can see that it's getting rid of all this detail down here. We don't want that. We just want that super crunch basically to be up in here. So I'm going to select this little white box. Hit Control I. That's going to invert it. And I'm going to paint in there. So I'm going to paint white. Let's see. Boom. Yep. Drop the hardness. And we're going to paint white to give us that effect. Only, the, only in the areas where we need it. Because you want to retain all that detail. So you have to be very careful. And we'll drop the opacity. So that feels good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and group these guys. And we'll make that editable. Set it to screen and we'll flip this around. And that gets us a nice looking bit of lava there. That's actually pretty sweet. Awesome. Very nice. I like that a lot very detailed because of the lightning. So adding the lightning gave us that look right there, which I am a huge fan of. So let's go ahead and duplicate this um, around to the other side. Just like that. And we obviously need to get rid of like whatever this logo is. So we can just kind of content aware fill this out. And that's going to be shift backspace and you make sure your contents is set to content aware and it gets it gets rid of it immediately. It's basically the greatest thing ever. Content aware fill is the best. Um, I'm also going to, no, I think that's fine down here as is. It kind of tapers off naturally. So I'm going to save this Photoshop document. And I'll save this image. as our lava map. We'll replace it and we'll see what it looks like here. We'll get this update. So 
So let's store the render buffer. And let's make sure that that lava texture updates. Okay, there it goes. And that's the difference. That's awesome. Yeah, the lightning, the lightning really adds. Really, really added to that. It added a lot of good detail that I think is super solid, so. That's fun, that totally worked. Now After Effects is still going hard, all right? That was quite the export. It maybe didn't need to be at 2K resolution, but we'll place a couple of these around the scene and I'll render a new one as we continue here and see what we get. What's up, Zalumi? How you doing? Um, good to have you, man. It's been a minute. Yeah, we just added some sweet lava on top of this with this map in Photoshop using images of lightning. And I think it worked. I totally think it worked. I love it when that stuff works out. Zalumi, are you doing a, a submission for this environment contest? Because you always put out good work, man. I really, really think you, you put out some good stuff. Daniel, what's up? Ooh, just finished. Yeah, so we're we're actually making some elements in After Effects. These are just action ascent or action VFX stock footage packs of some smoke and whatnot. Um, I'm taking this. I'm gonna throw it onto some cards. Um, now these have alpha. They were exported with alpha, which means you're not gonna see the black. And I'm gonna put them back here behind these rocks to make it look like the volcano is steaming. So let's go ahead and set this up. I'm just gonna make an octane diffuse material. I'll hop in and we, we just wanna give it, uh, let's see. We don't even need to go into node view to be honest. We'll go to the diffuse channel, we'll load the image and we'll find and navigate to our render output, windy smoke. We'll hop in here, we'll select one of these, we'll hit open and We'll click this, we'll go to animation, and we'll calculate it. So that's all the frames of this animation. We'll set it to linear, I believe, is the way to go on that. I'll try with the I'll try with the embed for now. And then you want to go to common or no, it's editor and animate the preview. So let's go ahead and make plane and the plane you need to have the at the at the right aspect ratio so i'm going to do 1920 by 1080 because that is the aspect ratio of the stock footage that we just rendered out of after effects i lied it's 2048 by 1080 so you just need to match that that's true 2k resolution let's stand it up And let's see if if this works. All right, so that looks horrible. Um, let's go to the node editor and we'll go view frame all. All right, so I'm gonna select that. Let's try linear. It's probably gonna do anything. But what we want to do is actually. Should be should be able to hit like alpha on this. Maybe what here's what we have to do: diffuse, image texture. We'll load our smoke element, and we'll set that to alpha. And 
and we'll also pipe that into the opacity. And maybe we need to invert this. No, it looks like we had it. So let's let's try this. Let's try pushing this all the way back to the mountain. And we got to flip it upside down. And I'm going to turn off our fog because it's taking up uh, a lot of rendered juice. And I'm obviously not seeing our smoke. If I scrub forward, I'm still not seeing our smoke. So maybe what we need to do is throw some color correction on here. and do something with our gamma. There we go, I can start to see it now. So maybe we duplicate this and we say this is just normal and this new one is the opacity So maybe it's, maybe we just need to adjust. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now this is working. So I have just the, you know, the base um, image texture or image sequence in the diffuse with no changes. I just changed it to float because it's black and white. And then for the alpha, I duplicated it. I set the type to alpha and then I just boosted the gamma a little bit to give it a bit more um, to give it a bit more opaqueness so I can see through it a little bit more. But that looks really good. And it'll be animated. So if I hit, if I hit, uh, if I hit play, this should be animating should be animating um, if it's not let's come in here and double check so the animation we calculate now it's being animated we want the same for the opacity we go in here animation we animate so now it's being animated now I'm not seeing anything because I'm wondering if No, you're supposed to be seeing stuff the whole time.
So I set it to range. And it looks like, let's see, the best way to tell the difference. So zero, it's gone, but frame one, it's in. Okay, so maybe, this is just a bit of trial and error, guys. Maybe we set it to exact frame, exact second or range. Okay, so range is working. For some reason, hmm. I usually, Usually this works. So here, again, when I'm trying to problem solve, the fastest way for me to do so is in just a blank new scene to see what the heck is going on. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna simplify it and then transfer over what I learned into the main composition. All right, let's do this. So we'll grab an image texture and we'll load our PNG sequence and it looks like butt. But let's try and get it animated. I click calculate and it goes away. I don't know why that's the case. All right, so that brings it in. Why, why, why is it not animating? Do you guys have any ideas as to why this is not working? Let's calculate it and let's just say 200 frames. That's so weird. I wonder if it would work in a non-octane material. Oh, movie start frame, 2644. I think that's why. And we'll make sure we want to animate the preview, which it's not working for some reason, but hopefully in the renderer, there you go, it's working. It's because of our movie start frame. That's, that's why it wasn't working. So the movie start frame is in our case, what the movie start frame is referencing when you're in After Effects, it's referencing this number, the start frame, 2644. I'm going to set that to zero. It should always be at zero. 
but for just this one, it's 2644. So we'll go back into our main setup here and we'll just make sure those, uh, let's see, range, exact frame, 2644. Fantastic. Render, and now it's actually gonna be working properly. So sweet. Solving problems, solving problems every day. Oh. That's all you gotta do when you're doing VFX is solve problems. Constantly solving problems. Bunny Live, you had it. You had the answer. So now we can move this card around however we want. And what we want to do is kind of hide it behind bits of rock and use it. All right, so if I go something like this, let's go ahead and turn down the intensity of this light. It's just, it's too much right now and we don't need it. So I'm going to take the emissive texture and tell it to just hold on for a second because it's too much. All right. So let's take the plane here. I'm going to go to check camera and hop out so we can actually see what's going on. Let's see if we can start using the smoke to shape out our environment. You see how it's behind this rock? Well, that's exactly what we want. We want it to be behind this rock. And you can scale this thing up even more. That's amazing. Yeah, that looks really cool. So I'm just going to place these all around. Um, now, I wish there was an easier way to kind of adjust and offset the timing. So I might have to make new cards um, to truly offset the timing. So let me... Kind of come over here. And uh, Seb Chen, yes, I am using a pen in replacement of a mouse. It is the best. I absolutely love it. I don't own a mouse. Um, I don't play any like desktop games. I'm mostly playing on my PlayStation or my Nintendo Switch. So I don't really need a, a mouse. Man, that just looks sweet. I'm going to start rendering another one here. It's that windy smoke that really, really looks nice. And I'm going to render this one at half resolution because I don't think we need the full 2K. So best settings you can just take to... Go to half. We'll make sure we go PNG sequence. Render output, windy smoke. This will be windy smoke two. And that should go a lot faster. So I'm going to flip this around.
and you'll see them doing this a lot in video games. Um, they do this to get these kind of looks in, um, oops, let's try that again. In different video games, that's how they make like different atmospheric effects. Yeah, that's really starting to add. Now you want to offset these because you don't want them to be really kind of going, um, you don't want it to be duplicated. It's the same reason we want to break up our tiling is the same reason you want to offset the timing of these different um, smoke bits. So I'm going to duplicate it and I'll set this one to the start frame instead of 2644. Let's offset it by like I don't know, 300 frames, 29.44. And we'll apply that to the new card here. And you should get a different look, a different steam look there. And we can scale it up. And maybe it's not entirely um oh that looks so cool and maybe i'll just offset it by another 300 frames we have a lot of frames to deal with so um let's do 32 44 We definitely need to make sure that these are both not the same here. There we go. And we can do a third one. And this one could be Thirty five forty four. And we're just doing this to get different looks. So let's keep going. Let's keep duplicating. And you want these at different depth amounts. So let's hop in and keep placing these things. So I'm hitting N and Q to turn off textures and that'll allow me to you know, see this a little bit more. Ooh, that's awesome. That smoke is back behind the mountain. And let's give that this guy here. We just want to make sure all of these have different smoke values. Awesome. And we could duplicate and drop one into this like central little area. And that looks amazing. Yeah. That looks super cool. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep adding this stuff off into like the, the corners and really just 
add to the scene and pepper all this stuff out. Um, let's get the emission texture going again and see what it looks like. And we just want to keep building it up, keep working. There you go. There's our second one. So we can, we can add that now and get uh, even different looks. So all these cards we can just keep working on and keep adding. Um, so I'll duplicate this and we'll hop in and I'll name these as uh, smoke one, smoke 1.1, 1 .1, smoke 1.2, and this will be uh, this will be smoke two. And we'll switch these out. So we got a completely different look now. And the start frame, if we calculate, that should line up just perfectly. So let's go ahead and duplicate this guy over here. And we'll drop on smoke two to that new one. Okay, so smoke two needs to be adjusted somehow, um, unless smoke two starts with nothing really in frame. But okay, that's not the case. Actually, that's not bad. I think it's just blending in with the background, that's all. And let's go ahead and control drag smoke two over to the right side. And let's see if we can't get it behind this little crag right here. Scale it up, move it up. So now it's back here. And we'll control drag smoke two, drop it on, and we'll call this guy smoke 2.2, because this is where we're gonna offset it. We'll go 300 frames. And you see that, you see how it gets us this like, this effect in the mountains back here a foggy atmospheric effect. It's exactly what we're going for. And you just want to break up all these different rocks with little different pieces of smoke. I'm very happy with this. I think this is turning out nicely. We'll do 2.3 and we'll do 2.4. So 2.3 will offset another 300 frames. And I'm hoping 300 frames is enough. We can always change it. And at the end of the day, we only need 88 frames for our render. So let's go ahead and just keep moving this up. That'll be 2.3. And we'll move up another one. And that'll be 
That looks so cool. So it's getting there. It's certainly getting there to this kind of level. And it's just layers and layers and adding different layers. So I think we have one more small windy smoke, which we'll export here from After Effects PNG sequence. And we'll go windy smoke three. And again, I think we can do, we're okay with doing a half quality there because it's in the background, it's pretty far away. 3D, what graphics card am I using? I am using an RTX Quadro 6000, which is allowing me to really add a bunch of crap to my scene. <laughs> it's great, it has 24 gigs of VRAM alone just on the one card. Um, you can see it down here. I've got 24 gigs of VRAM and I've used 2.7 so far. Um, it's a fantastic card and it's allowed me to create these larger scenes, which I really hadn't had a chance to before because I was on a, I was on a GTX 1070 before this. So it is, it's blowing my mind. Um, it's pretty incredible. So very, very, very excited about it. NVIDIA did send it over a few months ago. Um, so yeah, it's been cool. Um, you go, I'm not quite sure the difference between the RTX, RTX 2070 and the Quadro RTX 4K, but I think you can go to a website that like allows you to compare cards. Um, let's just say like RTX Quadro versus um, uh, like RTX 3080 or something. And, oh, it's Benchmark. Yeah, okay. So you can go to Benchmark and compare, like, the different cards and everything. This guy right here, and it'll tell you all the stats between the two cards. Um, so I was, using, <laughs> I was using a GTX 1070. It wasn't even a TI, and I'm currently on a RTX Quadro 6000. So it looks like this card, the 6000, is 140% better than the GTX 1070. So, but you're saying comparing uh, the RTX 2070 to the Quadro. Okay, so the RTX. Let's do RTX 2070, NVIDIA RTX 2070, compared to the Quadro 4000, RTX Quadro 4000. Ah, so the RTX 2070 versus the RTX Quadro 4000 speed wise is 12% better. Ah, interesting. Very interesting. So you, I mean, if you have the RTX 2070 versus the Quadro 4k, it looks like you're in a better position just a little bit by just a, just a touch. So that's, that's cool to know. It's very good to know, but yeah, this is a great website. It helps you compare different cards and everything. Um, but yeah, let's keep adding different little smoky bits. I like this second one. Smoke 2 is a bit more subtle. So I think I'm going to add some Smoke 2 elements over on the left side of the frame. And I feel like I could use a couple more. Ooh, I could definitely use one back behind there. So let's just take this guy and get it back in there to separate these little bits. And there's the third one, it's done. So I'll control drag smoke two and we'll make smoke three. And we'll load 
of these guys. And calculate. And let's go ahead and draw uh, drop smoke three onto that new guy. And we'll make all of our different versions for smoke three to give us a bit of randomness. Awesome. So I'll bring this forward, scale it down, and try and fit it between some of these mountains here. As many different areas you can break up, the better. That looks very cool. Yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm wondering if we can do any stuff on the mountain itself. So if we can come back here and start doing cards on the mountain. Awesome. Yeah, that looks super cool. Sweet. Yeah, that's looking that's looking really nice. I'm very happy with this. I kind of want to do a quick test render and see what that looks like so let's see let's lock the aspect ratio we'll go 640 by 270 all frames 24 frames a second and let's save this out We'll do iterations and we'll call this V1. And we'll see what we get. Um, 
but that has been that has been a fun stream i think that really turned out it looks super nice um this should go really fast but i'm gonna hang out with you guys for the next five ten minutes while this renders answer any questions you might have and we'll take a look at the final product and see what it looks like ah <sighs> Yeah, so am I going to have a big cloud behind the mountain, maybe some volumetrics uh, to have some cool volume illumination? Yeah, definitely. Again, we're, we're going for this. We're going for this vibe. So I'm really happy with what I have so far on this mountain. I might keep adding to it throughout the week. Um, but I definitely need to get the sky back here looking right and the clouds and everything around this area looking correct. So I'll probably do... I might do some fog volumes, but I might honestly build out the sky um, like in After Effects and bring that in after the fact. I like this PNG sequence um, with like cards in Cinema 4D. I think it's really powerful. So I might do a little bit of that with some fog in the foreground here up in this area. I think that could be sweet. And I also might just tweak it a little bit in After Effects after I render too. Um, to get the right look of the fog but you know these trees are going to go in eventually i will put some crows in here i do want to have some birds flying around up here i think that would be absolutely incredible so maybe that's just me going outside and filming some birds and um comping them in the same exact way i'm doing with these smoke cards um the only question mark for me is on like the illuminated smoke up here because I don't I don't quite know how to do super nice smoke simulations. Um, I could comp it certainly, but I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that one out. I'm going to certainly have to figure that one out. It's going to be tough, but it's okay. I think regardless of what happens, this render is going to look super sweet. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm very excited for this. So how's everybody coming on their renders? Are you guys doing okay? Do you guys have any questions? Are you guys entering the contest? Are you just starting? It's totally okay. I have only worked on this for the last three streams. This stream, last week, and the week before that. So I haven't had all the time in the world. <laughs> Um, certainly not. Ooh, this is cool. Yeah, you get a little bit of, a little bit of animation back here. I think this one's a little fast. Stuff in the background, you want it to be, sm um, if it's in the back, you want it to be moving slowly. That's how you know this thing looks big. Because when you have this quick moving smoke, it looks fast. So I'm going to have to go back in there and maybe slow some of that stuff down just a bit. but I think it's looking pretty darn cool. Yeah, I'll probably use some stock VDB assets. Drop those in. I think that'll look nice. Lobap, how can I start earning money from C4D when you reach a good level from sites like Freelancer? Um, so, you know, I've, I've started freelancing back in 2000... 2007 is I think when I started freelancing I was young and I just made one good relationship I made one good connection with a guy his name's Joe Cornell he owns Synapse Effects and they are a one-stop shop for anything practical pyro any like weather atmosphere fog um, blood and gore um, pyrotechnics fire you know he's a guy doing that and he from time to time took on some web clients who had some vfx needs or some graphical needs and i helped him out with that he was the first guy to really help me with um with the freelance world and i think once you make a good connection keep that connection okay um and how to make the first connection yeah i guess you said sites like freelance or um 
I know there's a website called like uh, shoot. It's one where you can like post your work. Um, give me two seconds, and I'm going to get you the name of this website. It's good for freelancing. Uh, Fiverr, I think, is the name of it. Fiverr. So you can offer your services on Fiverr. And business is all about the relationship. So as long as you continue and harbor, um, not harbor, um, uh, basically, yeah, just make sure it's a good relationship. Keep working on it. Keep adding to it. And make them happy. You got to certainly come to a point where like, you don't want to give the client everything and bend to their every will, but you do want to make sure that you guys agree, whatever you agree to in the beginning, um, you get them in the end. And you'll build a nice relationship with that client and they'll come back to you. They'll certainly come back to you. So keep it up. Yeah. Hugo or Ugo says art station is also good. Um, personally, I don't know. But um, I do know a lot of game developers and uh, concept artists uh, and game guys are on ArtStation. They're posting all their stuff there. So it's a good place to keep your work as a portfolio, most definitely. But this has been fun, everybody. This has been a lot of fun. Um... I'm very excited about all these renders that are coming in. So far, there's six renders that have come in, and they're all really cool. So keep it up. I'm really looking forward to seeing everybody's. This top 20 thing, it doesn't, it's not going to work unless you guys turn in your awesome renders. Um, and I really want this final product to be super sick. So I'm counting on you guys to keep working, work hard, and I promise you will, you will be rewarded. Um, whether it be with a new graphics card, a new SSD, uh, you know, some flash drives, or if I'm sending you prints, I'm, you're going to be rewarded physically in some sort of way, but also um, you're going to be rewarded in the sense that you took on a long-term project and completed it, and you're going to feel good about that, most certainly. Seb Chen, yo, yeah, dude, Pinterest, man, it's great. I'm glad it's now my most favorite inspiration concept source, which I always had a problem finding before. Yeah, dude, Pinterest is great. You build up those boards and really, really kind of tweak um, those looks that you're going for. It helps with inspiration. So I'm glad, I'm very, very happy that that the first stream did it for you, man. Um, let's try bringing that down. Where are you, picture viewer? Cool, so we got a little look at the smoke back there. That looks awesome. So there's this one like quick moving one back here that we gotta figure out. But that's certainly it, like that's the vibe. They're all kind of placed back there. Um, I think they can all move a little slower, probably half speed maybe. This one quarter speed, most definitely. But I'm very, very happy with this look. I think it's awesome. Ah, oh, so cool. I've never done this before, and I'm really glad it turned out. That's awesome. Yeah, I got to keep working on my lava. I think I maybe get a lava river coming down here or something into the foreground, but I think that'll be a good time. Dude, I've heard the Joseph Seed comment so many times. <laughs> I got to shave. No, I don't got to shave. I need to get a haircut. That's what I need, man. And don't worry. We're going to add vignettes. We're going to color correct the crap out of this. If you can make it look good without color correction, then my God, it's going to look nice with some color correction. I promise you. <laughs> Yay, I'm super glad that you guys are enjoying all these. Um, Jacob, are you saying if you don't have C4D experience, should you start in Blender? It's really up to you, man, at the end of the day. Um, 
but Blender is free. It allows you to jump in and learn for free. So maybe that is a good place to start. And then it, when you're ready to uh, maybe spend some money on a subscription service, I know Maxon switched over to something like that recently. You can hop onto that. I love Cinema 4D. I'm, not, I'm never going to switch over. Um, yeah, it's 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 one of my favorite programs ever. So, if but if you guys like Blender, there's nothing wrong with that. Definitely look into Blender if you're trying to get into um, the 3D world. It's definitely the most accessible way to do so. Emil, thanks for joining. Appreciate you. What am I thinking for the sky? Definitely some storm clouds. Absolutely, definitely some storm clouds. Um, you know, I'm going for this this reference that I put together in the first stream. Volume one is on building concept art. Now, there's a lot of um, references here in the Quixel Rebirth trailer. Um, a lot of good references for the sky in here. So it's very foggy, but there you can see there's some clouds back there, certainly. And they're doing the same trick here. They're doing the same trick with those cards for fog. Like this stuff is definitely a fog layer. All that stuff is a, is a fog layer. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're doing they're doing things like maybe this is this is certainly a brighter sky I definitely want to go for more of a stormy look um, and then maybe have like some sunlight blasting the foreground which I think is always a really cool look I love that look so much like there's a guy on art station his name is um, Aton Zana. And he was the lead, I believe the lead concept designer for The Last of Us 2. But he's got this image here. Is exactly what I'm talking about. You have a foggy, dark, kind of stormy background and scene, but you have these little streaks of sunlight that come through the storm, which I love. I love that look. So I'm definitely going to try and get that kind of vibe going. Um towards the end of of the process here and Aton he's great you definitely got to check out his work I take a lot of inspiration from him um, like this is just beautiful absolutely beautiful and he gives this whole process down here too which is sweet looks like this is last of us yep this is his work on last of us ah, absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful you can tell there's inspiration here that i'm going for here it's kind of in that similar um foggy dark uh wet kind of vibe which is super sick yeah Aton zana um it's pronounced or it's spelled e-y-t-a-n it looks like eaton but it's Aton Aton zana and thoughts on real-time ray tracing thanks to rtx dude of course I mean, what else do you want to know? Like, that sounds great. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm still working on Unreal Engine. I haven't given up on Unreal. I've just been doing a lot of C4D streaming these days. So, um, yeah, you know, it'll be a good time. I'm excited for next year. Very, very excited for next year. But, guys, um, please keep up the good work. Knock out those submissions. It's really going to make the top 20 video something special i want it to be something special so i'm looking to you guys I'm counting on you guys to deliver some awesome stuff um no pressure no pressure i'm just excited to you know collaborate with everybody and put something cool together so guys i'm gonna bounce um, i'm gonna grab some food um chill out for a little bit but you guys are awesome thank you so much for everybody's help and uh i'll see you guys next week it's next week is gonna be our final stream um for this contest right here and then i'm going to be announcing the winners on november 7th okay so hang on to your butts keep cranking and uh 
post in the parallel dimensions work in progress channel it's on the discord in the discord server um down below so definitely join that if you guys want to uh want to keep up with everybody's process and everything and you know in the meantime if you guys are looking for other ways to support i do have uh an HDRI pack, a Warzone HDRI pack that I put out earlier this year. Um, I do sell photography prints. Both of those links are in the description below as well. Um, yeah, check them out. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna be sending out a batch of prints this week. I had some uh, some some good big ones printed out. So I'm actually I'm probably gonna go pick those up today. But y'all, you've been awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two. I know I sure did. So I'll see you guys next Saturday, same place, same time. Peace out, y'all. Have a good one.